Oh, oh, that that would help. There, there, there's a red button here. Forgot to press it a little bit ahead of time, but you know what? That's on me. Welcome everyone to LCS Challengers week number two, day number two of playoffs. My name is Eric Desworks Patron. I'm joined, of course, by Matthew Cubby Samuelson and the legend that, uh, of course, me and Cubby love so so much. It is Kelsey Moser. How you doing today, Kelsey? Doing great. Really excited to be here. I think this is going to be an excellent best of five. The first best of five of Felix Draft in North American Challengers League. So very exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be very exciting here on LCS Challengers presented by Subway. I mean, Fearless Draft. It is. Uh, it has been pushed quite a bit in the best of threes. But now that we're getting into the best of five, Cubby, this is when we're going to see the champion pulls. A lot of those quirky picks start to uh, blossom out. Yeah, I'm going to save some of this talk for draft, but there are so many scenarios and theoreticals behind the scenes with teams that are like, you know, what if we give an OP early? We don't have to worry about it as the uh, this goes on. Like, what if we give a one trick early? We don't have to worry about that as draft goes on. Or, uh, you know, kind of like pairings later in draft, where are you going to reach? It's going to be really interesting to see. But two of our top teams can really dig for today as they try and earn their way to the LCS stage the easy way. Now, before we get into our matchup of the day, we got to talk about some of the new awards that are coming out. And a big one that's going to be announced right now is All Pro. We have number three. We have a big reveal lined up for you. So let's pull up the footage. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the formerly known as Academy Awards. There's a lot of players to celebrate this year. So to kick things off, we have our first ever NACL All Pro. Your winners for third team All Pro are from Maryville. And now they're taking the fight over here on the side. You, young jumping forward, Niles goes oh in, hops in, Spyrax still alive as Tenacity was threatening him. Scary Jerry now joining, Niles? reinforcing Niles. Big Niles. engage from Maryville top laner will claim two as Spyrax gets the credit for the kills. Double kill over to the Azir and DSG in full retreat. As Maryville now start to bear it, it is back and forth. Time, goes time. In. time with the breath of life from Zyko though. The shutdown goes over to Sajed. Now back in, Shaden has to flash out. Sajed is going on Scary Jerry and it's a beautiful Empress by that goes oh. completely wide while Shaden takes the Baron and FlyQuest are off here as Zyko getting a little bit Frisky with Cerny there. Won't be able to get out too much longer. He just burned the flash out. Cerny's just left to his own devices. Shane's going back in. Q3 dodged out of. I don't think they can do this one. It's FlyQuest. They are fighting this one tooth and nail. Scary Jerry with the fight. Oh, wow. Again. He gets it, though. Romer is TPing mid, so this should be a pretty big shot class. And he goes. And he goes and spawn in the back line. Here comes Mama Ray. Comes down, able to hit. But it really doesn't oh. do much. A brilliant knockup comes through. And Supernova are lambs to the slaughter. A double kill going to be found by Ray. No spawn. He will grab it. Going forwards, Romer wants to bring down the hammer onto Faisal. One more blast will do it doesn't land on the backside Faisal able to survive will he be able to tell the story of what he just witnessed the slaughter that TLC committed it's dredge lined now can they get their damage dealers to output the damage array coming over on the flank array just gonna pop everybody here one kill two kill oh. we go for the penta oh Triple my god array. I see it in his sights the man wants it will the team give it oh the quadra kill the bird was there He's gonna chase it down. Boom, right, he's running away from it. Okay, how much time does he have? We're oh, gonna hunt it, for it. It's a while. Can he get the flight back? I don't know what the cooldown is. Oh, he's he does have he's it. He's gonna run under the turret. Oh, oh he's got it. Damage array has it. Penta kill to Supernova's array. And a Penta kill to Smolder for the ace in the game. I'll be behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Rust, you're looking. Yeah. 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 Nice. That's right, baby. Yeah. No, guys. We can. Oh, they're gonna I think we end mid, end mid. So congratulations to our number three all pro team, Niall, Shaden, Romer, Array, Zyko. Hats off to them. We're going to have more reveals as time goes on because we got more awards for most valuable prospect, rookie of the split, as well as most improved in our following all pro teams. Uh, we got a lot to be given away, Cubby. Yeah, and it's kind of exciting because the very first award that we actually gave away from Academy at the time was the most valuable prospect award that Kelsey actually helped found. Uh, and it's nice to... At least be able to recognize some more players in our league that had a really good season, including this 13 All Pro. All right, and, uh, 
Yeah, I was about to oh, throw to you I anyway, Kelsey. So go ahead. Oh, oh, all good. I think the third team <laughs> All Pro is an interesting one because obviously we can't really comment necessarily on second and first All Pros. Um, to me, I think that there there are a couple of names that were not um, in in the list or that were on my ballot that were in the list. But uh, I think good recognition because I, I think with more and more teams looking internally to promote talent from NACL to LCS, it's great to have like an exhaustive list of. These were the stars of the season. All right. And uh, before we move on, real quick, Kelsey, who's your vote for most valuable prospect? <laughs> uh, that's a that's a good one. I think my, my vote for most valuable prospect ended up coming down to what was said on the ballot, which was more along the lines of, like, who should be an LCS right away, which I know traditionally wasn't the definition of most valuable prospect in the past. Uh, so I think that top laners end up being the most immediate upgrades to a lot of good LCS teams and would lead to more wins. So I did end up having using my Surdy bias, who you okay. know should have started an LCS already if I had my if I had my way about it, you know? So uh, that was that was my pick at the end of the day. All right, a quick peek at the bracket as we get ready for today. As you can see, we've moved on quite a bit as we only have, for what I'm looking right now, there's three teams that are already moving on to the next round. We still have Fear versus MU, which has been postponed. That's going to take place immediately after uh, this broadcast of Fly versus TLC. But uh, any thoughts, Cubby, as you take a look at the bracket? Uh, of course, we had some technical delays yesterday. So MU versus Fear, that match we broadcasted after the conclusion of this best of five. We'll have Ms. Ellen Joshi stepping in to wrap up that cast, which I'm really excited about. See who faces disguise in that lower bracket run. But of course, teased it earlier, and you can see it in the bracket. Whoever wins today, that will be the fast track to the LCS stage. Which I know uh, really matters for these guys, making it back, whether you've been there before. It's your first time playing where the pros do. That's the goal that these guys have moving forward and so getting to do that at the end of challengers league uh to try and hoist the trophy or a pendulum in our league is a really it's a privilege that these guys look forward to and it's only five bucks five bucks to show up at the live <laughs> stage to watch these guys over in the riot arena once we do get to playoffs once we do get to the finals you know our top two teams in fact uh we're going to be deciding one of those teams right now as we take a look at the schedule of the day to figure out who's going to be advancing over in the uh winners finals starting off it is going to be FlyQuest challengers versus team liquid challengers that is our upper bracket finals and then later on we will have uh Mazel and joshi joining us for fear versus Maraville. Yeah, so it, for, excited for that one. Absolutely. I think uh, 100%. I'm very excited for this one. Just to go back to the live finals point, $5, way cheaper than a cinema ticket. And you don't get to meet the actors at the end of the movie. Just saying, if you go to the movie theater. But here, <laughs> you can have a chance to meet our pros. We'll be exceptional. Um, I'm excited to see the Fury MU series after because I was trying to co-stream it and it did not work out last night, which <laughs> I know I know you guys can be sympathetic towards. So our first team on the Rift, Team Liquid Honda Challengers. This is a team that we had uh, higher expectations coming into the season. Uh, didn't exactly meet them in the regular season, but now that we've been seeing them sort of uh, vibe in playoffs, it looks like a different beast now, Cubby. Yeah, it, it's something where, you know, it's been kind of wild, like the playoffs. There's the joke going around with LCS, like, you know, regular season doesn't matter. And if that's the case, you know, you watch Challengers League. That's where it really doesn't matter. But Kelsey, I know that you've pulled some footage, uh, I mean, having some of your expertise on the desk, and you've been really impressed with how Keel and Kim Down have been playing them out. Yeah, so obviously in this clip, uh, it's more spawn roaming top because they're playing Senna. But if you watch mm -hmm. a lot of their games very consistently, the way that it will happen is bot lane, either Kim down or spawn if he's playing Senna, will roam towards top and then make a play there while Keel will be going towards bot side and covering. So they're always having like one of those sides covering the counterplay that's possible from the opponent team while while a big team is being played. This has made their early game much more stable so that they can go for those explosive leads. And it has led to them effectively having a very significant gold advantage of 15 minutes, which has carried them into mid game um, and made them look very strong. And carried them into winner's finals, of course. Uh, very good uh, boost of performance coming out from TLC. But their opponents, Kelsey, I'm going to give the mic over to you again because this is FlyQuest Challengers. You're wearing green. This is your boys. So how are you <laughs> feeling about them? 
Yeah, there's absolutely no green in this graphic. However, <laughs> we're, we're green. We're green all the way. Uh, it's it's no secret that I've been shilling for these guys really hard. Um, two of these players were slated to join EG if EG stayed in LCS for sure, and then the third one was on the table. Um, so Time it's very excited to, to see right them, now. and of course, we've had strong solo lane performances, which I'm always a fan of. And Cubby, you wanted to take it away on this team fight clip? Yeah, I, I mean, something that we've both been really impressed about with FlyQuest Challengers is their team fights. I love this clip because they're down in this game, and I think that it's a combination of Chime, who is really the leader. Uh, having the conviction to at least mm. call one side of the fight, taking down the Jarvan. And then the way that this team uses their health bars, bounces in between cooldowns, and uh, really Sajad, the rookie, whose positioning was just impeccable in this fight. This is what we've come to expect from FlyQuest Challengers. This is a team the team fights very well, uh, almost instinctually, and something that we feel like is going to give them potentially a step up against TLC today. Now, uh, Kelsey, I know you're a part of the uh, podcast making the rounds while well, you and Emily are going to be making <laughs> rounds this time because for those of you watching the broadcast, you heard Emily over on the LCS one. We're going to have Kelsey joining us in game and in draft, uh, at least up until we get into match point. So thank you for joining us, of course, Kelsey. We're very excited to have you and uh, the insight you can provide for this champ select. I'm excited. And right away, we see the Rumble being banned. That's a big pick for me in this series. The big pick, I think, that has really helped TLC turn their season around. Jenkins has been phenomenal on the Rumble. Mm -hmm. He struggled a bit on the Aatrox Udyr, but as soon as they had that pick, uh, they were going game busters, and it's it's been great for keeping pressure the top lane. It also opens up Roamer's champion pool to play stuff like the Jace and the Tristana, so I'm not surprised to see that taken off the board, but... Uh, keep in mind, this is really our first best of five fearless that we've had. Some of these teams have, you know, been playing best of five fearless and scrims behind the scenes. We've heard rumblings of how things can change when you have that fourth and fifth game potentially added to a series. And I mean, regardless, it's going to stretch your champion pool. And uh, already, like one of the things that yeah. we were kind of trying to see, Kelsey, is like, hey, what OPs would you let through? And I know one pick that we were talking about specifically is that DLC plays a lot of Kalista, and I see Kalista and Senna both open up in the draft right now. So. Again, this is a, a point where if you pick a champion, you do not get it for the rest of the series. Yeah, and this is the first time and I think the last three series where FlyQuest challengers have opened yeah. the Callista. So I'll be very curious to see if TLC pick it, if Fly answer with like a Poppy or Talia, which have been both very successful picks for them. But it is the Senna out of the gate. So, uh, providing at least some flexibility as to where they want to play, so you can play Senna both as the ADC, can go for the fasting, taken to the support role. For the time being, FlyQuest are hovering on some of their options that they want to retaliate with. Uh, yeah, Jana, and you, you always expect that when it's something more aggressive, but I don't uh, expect it to go in this early. I think we're doing some shout outs with the hovers, so uh, yeah. some of our players here. Uh, one thing I do want to update fans <laughs> on back home we have played on Live Patch for the entirety of the season, but right now we are on 14.5. And there was a visual bug that we had yesterday with the grubs healing instead of shielding. That has been fixed. So we will see grub shields back. We are on 14.5, which matters a lot, especially for Senna. At least you teased the, the farming option. We like our fasting Senna here. And I like to see FlyC deny Nautilus away from that Senna. Uh, so that is a really big pick. Now, FlyC doesn't have access to Nautilus for the next four games of this series, Kelsey. As Nautilus has been very dominant in the support pool this split. And it's been great for Kim Down, but they have also played the Tom Kench. And there's mm -hmm. the Talia. That has been a huge terror. I always say Talia is massive because she's good into immobile picks with the seismic shove. And she's good into picks with dashes with the Unraveled Earth. So she's just one of the most OP champs in the game right now. And that's an easy blind lock at the TLC. Allows uh, Romer to do his uh, pretty much name thing, roam around with the Weaver's Wall. <laughs> I also like the amount of protection that you have in the bottom lane. Uh, Senna, Kench, very hard to die, very hard to uh, jump on. But now we got some pretty good pick options coming out for Fly C as they grab the Ari. This is actually pretty curious because the last series that TLC played against DSG, this was very similar to their game one draft. I think they rounded that out with like Jax and Gnar. Uh, and it led to a game that didn't have nearly enough activity for me. Uh, so... I, I really want to see TLC be able to push the pace. This is a team that, at least in playoffs, they have the highest goal differential at 15. The team that very much will draft for early game and play out early games, kind of like their LCS squad as well. Uh, but we didn't see TLC really wake up in game one against the guys in that series. They let a smolder scale for free. And facing a Jinx down on the other side, Kelsey, that's something that you have to be very wary of. At least making sure that every fight you take is calculated because resets are deadly and... You've seen that in Challengers, uh, Jinx especially can run quite a few maps. 
And we've already seen Sajed's uh, Aphelios pop off very well. I think I know him best for Jinx. Um, when he was doing a lot of the tryouts and the combines, Jinx Melio was a huge bot lane for, for Sajed, and he, his Jinx always seemed to get the resets, always seemed to get the pentakills in almost all the games. Uh, so I, I, I'm surprised to see it this early, just with the way meta has been, but I'm also not surprised to see FlyQuest prioritize it. I, I, I want to sneak in here real quick and just say that with the Jax and the Kinder Bands, I feel like that was almost opening up a Zin Zhao for TLC, as I don't like Zin that much for FlyQuest. I really like it for TLC, but also... Renekton uh, being open. Yep. We've seen Jax be some of the answers, and Surdy's Renekton is fantastic. Yeah, you want to yeah, get think, uh, uh, excited about the Croc, Kelsey? Yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely <laughs> excited about the Croc. I think the Croc is very strong at the moment, and you can play this this Gragas matchup that they're hovering to get a pretty significant lead, um, but obviously Gragas creates problems for you later. I think Jax is also just a good band because we don't see a lot of flex picks and challengers with fearless drafts, but it is something that Flycy do flex both jungle and top. Oh, Keel with the Graves. I, oh. You, you joked about the gumball machine for Keel, Kelsey. That's the first <laughs> Graves we've seen from, uh, from him this split. Yeah, I mean, I, I call it the gumball machine because Keel has had 17 unique champ picks so far this spring. Mm -hmm. He is by far the most unique champ picks of any player in this game. And it's really opened up the strategies that TL have been playing. And seeing him pull the, the Graves out against... Shaden, who's obviously known for the champ, is is a little bit of a flex. You know, we we like to see we like to see that kind of challenge coming out of our players. Yeah, I, li I like that. It's the gotcha champion pool for kill because eventually you're looking for the rare role of the <laughs> new new to come out. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, you know, it, it is the way it is. But champions are now locked in. What I do like coming out from FlyQuest challengers is they have a lot of damage, they have a lot of skirmish, they have a lot of setup for this Viego to really start popping off. They do, and I mean, something I'm going to be looking at, Kelsey, as we dive into this game, you set up that Keel and Kim Down are really good at making sure they're covering both sides of the map. They do a nice job of helping each other out. Something that I've really credited Surti and Fly C for is playing around top lane. <laughs> I see this Renekton and the Gragas. You have to set this pick behind. The Shaden is someone that's going to get involved in that lane, and I'm curious if they can almost survive the onslaught of Fly C, who I feel like has that stronger top side overall. And it could start with level one, where with Graves, you really do get to dictate the map. Yeah, I do think you have a pretty strong level one coming out with the Tom yeah. Kench. And then, of course, the into the Renekton, almost every top laner actually has a stronger level one. So you have a lot of options here. Um, one thing that I'm going to be looking for is TLC to kind of accelerate the pace of the game because that's where they really shine. And then what we set up in the, the pre-show, Fly C, when they have stronger front lines str and better front to back um, with their ADC having big better range advantage is where they really take off. All right, Twitch chat, let us know who got this one TLC for Team Liquid Challengers, Fly C for FlyQuest Challengers. Now TLC, again, this is the upper bracket finals that they've been able to get to, uh, turning around their season in the post thus far. Uh, if you lose right now, it does not mean that you are out of the tournament. You will fall into the lower bracket finals. So there still is an extra life, but it would feel good to make it to finals right here. Do want to say that that ward uh, gives a lot of information for a kill starting and it looks like both of our junglers working their way up towards that top side so yeah gragas early on like level one level two decent for gragas in this matchup but come level three that's when renekton starts to take over and guys i know we've actually talked about this matchup quite a bit off stream too yep. it really feels like this season with the item changes for renekton it, he has the power to push this matchup a lot harder early with gragas almost coming back harder if it is the roa plus tier build we've seen a bit uh, to, like, bounce back against Renekton later on. But that power window for Renekton early is much better. Yeah, we've also seen the Fimble Winter a bit in LPL, yeah. like, with the Grasp. Um, both of those builds, you definitely become stronger in the mid-game, but uh, Renekton can take off, and this is something that FlyC have really focused on, putting a lot of vision, a lot of information early uh, for top lane to, to really take off. And, of course, by contrast, I feel like TLC have used... Jenkins almost has a lightning rod, right? Where they, they want you to come top. They want you to fight. Uh, so I think that that'll be a very interesting to see how that plays off this this game. Yeah, I'm kind of interested too, because we've mostly seen the Roa Seraphs and Challengers, but fun enough impact in that final game we just saw in LCS did play that uh, matchup and build on the Gragas where he went the tier into Sunfire into Fimble Winter. So wondering if Jenkins and TL have a read on that in, in their camp as a whole. And also looking at that matchup over on the top side, 
Uh, you know, Jenkins, I, I, I do think he's been doing pretty well in the season, but I asked Serdy about how he feels about the matchup against Jenkins. Straight <laughs> up said, he feels like it's a one trick. It's going to be uh, pretty easy to take him down in lane, but I don't know, man. Post-season Jenkins definitely feels a lot different than what we had in the regular season. Definitely a classic Serdy response. Uh, I remember <laughs> Sajed recently in my co-stream chat was saying that, you know, Serdy requires an awful lot of resources. Oh, here we go. Nice Almost flash. Almost a flash. Oh, but the stun comes through. Seismic shove Ooh. will push him away, but it's oh. not enough to defend the first blood from FlyQuest. Nice reaction flash from Romer, but now Ari gets ahead. That's a, something that can revisit Kelsey as well with Flash being down for Talia. Kind of why you take the Ari in this matchup ability to combat Talia in the side lanes. But if you get a flash down like this early, I expect Fly C to maybe play this one through mid. Yeah, I mean, w one thing we have basically not talked about at all is the mid lane matchup. These being the two best laning mids statistically in the league, there will obviously be a lot of focus around that. We also have the Viego Ari combo, which is a classic. And then, of course, you have Dmat for Ari to match like Talia's roam potential. We talked about Romer with the, the Talia ulti, but that's why, again, another reason why they're picking Ari to match. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny because there was a lot of hype between these two mid laners coming in and. Uh, Kelsey, I know specifically with you, you felt like Quad was a lot stronger pickup than Romer <laughs> yeah. early on. And I feel like we did see that. Quad really overshadowed Romer uh, for most of the regular season that we had. Is If there was a basic, most val valuable player award, I'd probably give that to Quad. Quad was an absolute beast. Yeah. He had the biggest CS differential at 15 at 23. If you had every region in the world from mid lane included, Quad was number one. This guy was on another level. But we have seen Romer throughout the split really step up with TLC, settle into these comms, and I, I don't think he's still playing map extraordinarily well, but it's still a lot better than what we saw earlier on in the split. I think it was really interesting to see how both teams kind of situated with their imports, because with Quad, he seemed to just fit in like a glove. He works so well with FlyQuest. With Romer, we have talks with uh, Kill and Kim down throughout the season, and there were some growing pains. Uh, there were some uh, language barrier difficulties they had to get through. Uh, Kill was very optimistic about this stuff uh, eventually growing and uh, being able to maximize alongside him. And so far, it seems to be the case as FlyQuest is going to secure the first Drake of the game. All the meanwhile, Kill will grab the Void Grubs. Yeah, usually we don't see FlyC focus around bot side, but with the Jinx, we see him take an early Drake. Uh, and also, no center rotation with the Grubs. I really like when you put Sen up there because you get a lot of souls from taking Grubs as the center team. Uh, but so far, I'd say kind of what we expected, Kelsey. Yeah, more or less. You, I, I think it is a bit surprising to see TLC take the grubs early when you have a Renekton in the top lane, and yeah. we, I see do love playing around top. Uh, what I'm kind of expecting to happen for next grub spawn, because when you have Pryo top and you have a champion like Jinx that takes towers so efficiently, is you do see the lane swaps coming out, right? Yes. You see the Jinx trying to take the, the plates and get the second round of grubs, so that's kind of what I'm expecting the FlyC game plan to be here. I, I like that you bring that up, too, because, like, now is a window where if you did abandon the Jinx, she wouldn't be able to pressure and also would be very vulnerable to the Tom Kench, expecting that by the time second grubs are up, you have Berserker Greaves on Sajed, and with those two summoner spells, it's not really vulnerable to getting 1v1 by the TK, so um, something to look out for as we move forward in this game. I will also let them match the center, right? And it's something that yeah. they definitely, like, they picked the Jinx early, they want Sajed to be the hero of this draft, they want Sajed to pop off and carry the game, so uh, just prioritizing his individual lead is definitely going to help them out when it gets to the front of backs. And for the most part, just keeping Chime over on that side, Shaden hovering as well to just grab the uh, Scuttle Crab for the time being. A little bit of an attempt at a pinch coming up from TLC, but FlyQuest are able to find themselves safety. At the moment, I, I will say one nice thing for TLC so far is that, yes, Romer lost Flash early, but he has not been revisited as we see Chime and Shaden looking at Romer. Uh, well played from him. He's playing very defensively here, covering, uh, I'd say, a side that his jungler is not on, but uh, ended up being the correct side given that bot lane was missing from Fly C. So I, I do like how Romer managed that situation, dodged out on the timer where he was very vulnerable. But I also do think keeping the pressure up mid is really helpful here because a lot of times what will happen is they'll they'll force the aggression on the top side. They'll want you to to fight Jenkins, but with the Talia ult, uh, Rummer's often often able to come join and counter gank, and that's led to them being able to turn a lot of top side skirmishes. So, uh, Flycy acknowledging this and then pressuring Rummer is actually very huge. Oh my gosh, kill these wards have been on point from Flycy this game. 
Yeah, I, I know. I know something that you know you've been really high on Kelsey. Uh, you've teased that there were three pieces that could have been a part of your EG roster. Two of them being Shade and then Surdy, pretty soundly. The other one being Chime just hit a nice dredge line. Eat force. Yeah, will be enough to protect spawn, but that means the ultimate is going to go down as well as the heal. Here comes Kill in the mid lane. Wants to find Quad. Quad does have the Spirit Rush, so he's not in trouble. Kill trying to get that to be burnt out or the flash. Here comes Shade and on to Roamer. Right now, FlyQuest oh, calling the bulk flash. of the men over towards the mid lane. Chime flashes for Cat landed on to kill, unfortunately. The Hex Flash trade is nice. And, and Kelsey, I know that Chime is definitely been someone who is a vocal leader for FlyQuest, but you've been very high yep. on this split. Yeah, I mean, I think f to me, a lot of the times I've said Chime is kind of and giving off MVP level performances. You said Quad would be your MVP for the split. I feel like just most valuable player Chime is definitely up there for me in the sense that, you know, we expected Sajed to be a pretty, have struggle with his laning phase, but Chime was taking the reins on that, getting bot lanes early on in this split. Uh, Chime, is, I think if anyone can out kind of map control the Kim down keel duo, it's definitely Chime. You pointed that out to, to us to me and corrected me kind of in our, our private conversations because mm -hmm. he's just been such a huge huge player for this team for sure and his leadership is something i know that he personally wanted to work on quite a bit so it's great to see him do that shaden's starting to hover over here towards the top side just clearing out vision for the time being uh, jenkins won't be in any much of a threat you're still seeing that vision that FlyQuest are trying to establish and so far that vision has been pretty spot on uh yeah. you saw that earlier placed in the mid lane caught out where keel was now chime establishing more of that vision and kind of what we set up earlier about second grubs you can see fly hard playing for it surdy base tp'd back immediately to be as strong as possible for this potential skirmish in tlc not even going to contest they're going to play to force jinx off the bottom chime rotated here expecting a potential fight from tlc but tlc didn't give it to them and said keel going to rush to cut off this Jinx, but not going to be able to do so as Quad probably going to have to ult. Ooh. That Quad has to ult right over that wall if he wants to get away to the safety. It's not the biggest loss. Sucks that it's on cooldown. You still have your summoner spell, so it's not going to be the biggest threat onto this Ari. They could look for a hard play bot, though. So Shaden's going to recall and sprint down here as TLC looking like they're going to get the second Drake. Yeah, and posturing up. We did kind of expect a lane swap coming out of the Jinx. That would have potentially prevented this play but jinx also just has like the very good wave clear with jinx rockets etc um we've also talked about this this dragon control situation it feels like fly c don't value dragons nearly as much as team liquid challengers uh throw back to their lcs team popping off on dragons today but uh the dragon stacking is something tlc will prioritize fly c getting the early one and kind of ignoring the subsequent ones and honestly, I mean, I, I don't usually talk about individual drakes that much, but I think TLC got the best split possible. You're playing against three reset champions. You just picked up a mountain dragon. That's uh, yeah. pretty much the best thing that TLC could ask for. Still working towards their conditions is going to be Fly C. I mean, for the most part, it seems like Shaden has been trying to uh, link up with Quad. There has been quite a bit of pressure as of recently from Kill over into the mid lane. Uh, Quad getting roamed out, uh, him being able to get free, it does put on a similar pressure that Roamer can put onto this map. So the battle of mid laners still holds a lot of value in this. We are definitely seeing a situation where both both sides are kind of comfortably farming at this point. I do think to an extent, both teams kind of feel like that favors them a bit, right? You've got the Senna, you've got the Jinx. Uh, you've got the Gragas since the Renekton for the, the TLC side, so neither team feels super pressured at this point. Yeah, I, I will say that this top lane matchup, so Jenkins, oh, oh wow. Oh, combo pushes 30 away. Dominus goes up, pops oh. the Q, gets the heal. Collateral's not enough to finish him off, but here comes Shaden looking for the Heartbreaker. Kills low, flush oh, wow. forward from 30. Shaden's able to grab the kill. Oh, almost... Can't escape. Roma will pick up the revenge. Quad not going to look. That was an explosive fight to start off. I'm surprised that Surdy escaped, but uh, Fly C down numbers. They managed to come out with a one for one. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely one of those uh, Fly C feeling themselves moments. Low health bars oh, playing on the edge, uh, getting the reset <laughs> off for the Viego, and almost getting out with that one. Almost got the, the second playoff on the passive there. <laughs> so close really? to the setup right here. Nice explosive cast, and just so shy. It's that Q. Especially when the Dominus is up and you have all that extra rage. 
I mean, that was 100 health away from getting the one shot yeah. down to the Surdy. That would have really changed this one. Surdy flash pivoting to make sure Shading gets the reset. Wasn't enough to quite get him out, and Quad wasn't feeling spicy enough to take the fight on his own against Talia. But uh, I I'd say overall, good news for TLC in the sense that, like, it, at least they're kind of putting this Renekton, like, down. And one of the reasons that I kind of like the Renekton in the Gragas matchups is that we were seeing a lot of Roa and Seraphs. With the Sunfire Rush now, we don't see Renekton actually go for that Eclipse first, which is the big item that I feel like made this matchup better for Renekton early on. Said he's actually forced to go early Cleaver, which kind of makes him a lot more util-focused and very uh, much less powerful in this 1v1. I think it, it definitely helps because he does want to frontline for the Jinx later, but if we're talking about frontline, you know, TLC Gragas is just going to do so much more yep. for you, especially since uh, Jinx is going to be very susceptible to kind of those like flash ulti uh, E knock up situations. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this pans out, but Gragas doing very well in this matchup so far. I mean, what's the Jinx really got after you burn the flash, after you burn the ghost? It's hard to stay in the fights when you have so many members coming after you and now spawn. Try and get a piece of chime after that hook goes awry. Now kill showing up over towards the river as well. Rift Herald has spawned. It'll be TLC who have the inside track. Yeah. And this is definitely the coordination that we're expecting for TLC. I think what has really been their strength is coming together in these early games and creating a stabilization point. So. Um, seeing them constantly on top of these rotations and Flycy kind of having to scrap for for a bit of uh, low probability kills is, is is more what we would expect out of this early game. I, I'm also kind of curious, like I don't I haven't seen Flycy with shading kind of hard commit onto Romer and the Talia as Chime gets caught. Kim down couldn't get the abyssal dive on the Chime. Chime gets out in time. Now the fight for the Rift Herald. Oh, Still having the uh, battle lines drawn here by FlyQuest. Shaden's the only one who's positioning forward. Still half health on this engage makes it a little bit difficult for FlyQuest to find the angle, but Chime's still going to look for it nonetheless. 2k health remains on the Rift Herald, and it's going to be FlyQuest to secure it. Now Chime comes in with the hook. It's able to land, but gets devoured. Kill stays alive. Now has to back off as FlyQuest are sweeping the floor with TLC. Wow. Jenkins going the long way around, and you'll see the gray screen as it's a double kill for the top lane. Surdy grabs it. I think the big thing there was that Jenkins tried to zone off Surdy, and not only did he miss the first body slam, Kelsey, but afterwards he was stuck in the top side. So uh, the early kill goes to Fly C, resets come in, and they end up doing pretty well in this fight. Yeah, I mean, we also see the Unraveled Earth used very early, which just makes it very easy for Fly C to walk in and basically just hit the Rift Herald while their front line's being zoned. The Fly C, Surdy actually gets a great angle here. Yeah. Where he's cutting off the Gragas, and then this is the perfect kind of like front line into Jinx resets, Diego resets that we expected from the draft and from Flycy in general. Yeah, that body slam missing is so big because then you don't get the cooldown refund too as the Gragas. Like he could have had another one up to keep Surdy out and says Surdy gets into the fight. Resets come in, Jenkins ends up being split off to the top side. Yeah. And Flycy not only does Shade and Yoink the objective, they get the winning fight. That's a two and a half K gold deed. Uh, second dragon for themselves to boot too. So some bonus damage on the reset comp. And all of a sudden, like, Fly C really took control of this game. That's a big bump in gold that we just witnessed right now. I mean, it was about, uh, what, 600 leading for FlyQuest now jumping up 2k. So FlyQuest, they're definitely getting control of the map right now. You can take a look at the gold differences in lane, especially Surdy over there in the top side who has a 1k above uh, Jenkins. That was exactly what I was going to point out, SRX. The Suddenly, the, we were talking about how well Gragas was doing and stabilizing in the lane phase, but we're going to have a big croc now you know uh just press Big the ult gaming. run in <laughs> get on top of everyone sustain for days so this will be a, an interesting one to see especially since you do have good zone control coming out for roamer you do have decent range from spawn and you do have uh, kim down being able to sort of reset the fight but you have to use those cooldowns extremely well if you want to play against a renekton with flash up I, I think the Andre is coming in for it to be a really important because I almost feel like the, like the longer fights for TL is going to benefit them, and that's the one way they can deal with what's going to be a rather large front line between Shaden and Surdy. Uh, in the meantime, I want to see Fly C when objectives are down attack this Talia. You're taking away the Weaver's Wall, burning Flash is big, and that's part of why you're taking Ari into Talia. The fact that 
If you get into a long lane, you have the ability to continuously reposition around the Unraveled Earth and really pressure Talia. So I like the fact that Fly C is deploying towards Quad's side of the map to try and play off that Ari. And it, it, respectively as well, I like the fact that TLC trying to defend against it. They have Roamer on this side of the map and it's a much better matchup right now into Renekton where with no help, Renekton can't really pressure. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Surdy has had a little bit of issues with pushing out a bit too far inside, so he's going to maybe take the, the L on this one a little bit and let the, his team get topside T1. So that's a lot of control over to TLC for the bottom side of the map, but we'll concede that for top where Quad is able to get a brick zone pocket. All the meanwhile, TLC just rotating around this mid lane for the time being. You can see moving out of the lane is going to be Quad. Now that he's grabbed that top brick, can reconvene with the rest of FlyQuest. I think we're in a little bit of a lull here, uh, but <laughs> potential for Baron to be hit rather early. Something I do like from FlyC, they actually went double pull through both of their side lanes. And I think that if Jinx is able to get IE first, they could actually realistically pressure this Baron early. As we see Harold use to secure mid outer. Hey, can we and get I a... Think the... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Kelsey. I, I just want to say, can we get a train skin for Harold? I'm, I just, I just think. <laughs> I just think. So we got it for one for you. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah. Harold, Harold skins are, are a play for sure. I mean, what I was gonna say was, Greg is showing on that top side, and Flyquest immediately reacting by dropping the rift. I think is is great because it opens the map, uh, creates really nice opportunities for them, where you're basically going to have to spread. Uh, Roamer out, you're going to have to spike them down out, force them to use cooldowns to catch up on any play that they want. And actually, just look at the vision, like the words coming out yeah. on, on FlyQuest, like the top side control. This lets them, as soon as TLC show here, in time for to be able to rotate and set up on bot, and then just kind of play the map and force them to react like that. Also, real quick, Jinx just finished IE, and there's a Seeker on Quad, so I think this is a timer where FlyC really wants to fight, whether that be uh, Baron or Dragon, the potential Dragon into Baron if they win hard enough. A uh, minute 30 before that Dragon does come up and FlyQuest are already around the area. Uh, with their vision that they have uh, established earlier, that information that they get spotting out where TLC is does result in, uh, will result in FlyQuest uh, choosing what objective they choose to focus on. But for TLC in the time being, they're trying to get control of the map state once again by uh, only pushing in this wave in the mid lane. Uh, they're a little bit early on this Drake setup, which makes me think that they're going to, to to rotate top to retake this dragon, this Baron setup, and maybe give the Drake here. Um, they can fight the the Drake, but FlyQuest challengers, if you did a, a power ranking of likes to pull Baron at 20 minutes enjoyers, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. FlyQuest are definitely up there. They love pulling Baron. They love forcing the enemy to come fight into them and into their zone. So. Um, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised if with the Kraken Slayer, i.e. Jinx, that's part of their game plan. <laughs> Honestly, wouldn't surprise me if it was part of a TLC game plan as uh, in the past. We've seen them, <laughs> at least when they get into desperate situations, try and do plays like that, where they'll just go for the Baron right away, understanding that the game is lost and they have to find an objective back in. Uh, right now, it's a 4k lead for FlyQuest, and they're not completely in the sync yet. Yeah, it's a big moment of the game. All summoner spells are available from each of our teams, and I, I think comp-wise, I'd favor Fly C. Yes, they have a 4k gold lead, but also I think their champs are really strong right now. You'll see have a choice of whether or not they want to contest this Baron. They're already seeding mid to try and play this one through bot as Roma's on the turret. And Quad! That's nice. Ooh, nice charm. It takes a big chunk out of Roamer, but Quad returns the favor. Now like that, going forward. Ooh. Turret's gonna go down. Spawn, losing half his health, will give FlyQuest at least a track towards the dragon, but TLC are looking to pinch it out. I mean, Romer has TP to get back, but Spawn is not. He's just here with no health. Here we go. Oh, oh and instantly Shaden gets blown up. The Kroc is in the Thunderdome as he battles with the rest of TLC, but it's five on one, and Surdy can stand no longer. A shutdown goes over to kill, and the dragon still gets picked up by FlyQuest. And before that fight, you have Quad using the, the ulti, using the charm, getting zoned out by TLC pushing in, and then Fly C just kind of almost uh, by default by rope pull the Drake anyway. Uh, interesting though, Shaden goes down and Jed still secures it for them, so that double Infernal is definitely going to be a big help in team fights later, but um, a little bit of a misplay on the zone setup from Fly C on that one. Yeah, kind of curious to see that one again because it was a really solid execute on the Shaden. 
Uh, but the fact that Sujet ends up with it, like, that's, like, all the hard work gone is... Uh, gonna get another look. Yeah, Shaden's gonna jump in to kill. Nice sidestep, and then he's just vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Jenkins pulls the trigger with the body slam flash. And I, I like... Nice over the wall. It's called you made, Kelsey, like, things early. Uh, there's no alt now for Ari for the team fight. And if Ari doesn't have alt in the team fight, she's just not the same champion. Yep, and then, uh, Romer trying to, to grab quad, quad in the cutoff there, but has the presence of mind to make it over the edge, so... At least you keep three on the map, and TLC can't pull the Baron. Pretty nice charm, I'm just gonna say, on that last uh, bit of it. Uh, all that being said, it shows you the fighting spirit that TLC really have. They're never really out. It was a bit of a blunder on FlyQuest's part. They did allow that pinch to happen into two of their members, but now... Uh, TLC, as we said, they did get some gold going back into their way. You can see right now, Kill has three kills on this Graves. And it is really going to come down to, can the Graves get into fights to, to one-shot or to eliminate? He is going with, like, the full lethality build. So if he has yeah. Flash up, the idea is to make sure that he can get on top of the Jinx, instantly obliterate mm. her, and, and look for those types of angles to make sure that you have, like, one less threat onto the FlyC team, or... As we saw in that that play, he can also just get rid of the Viego, right? Nice sidestep, uh, clean execute with an old combo, and that's the end for them. Yeah, credit to Kill. He's kept himself far ahead enough where this is actually viable for him. And something that, it's not like you have a Tom Kench to eat the Jinx, right? Uh, Jinx is going to be very vulnerable to this, so I want to see if TLC can try and pressure. At the moment, though, flashes are pretty much all up for uh, FlyC minus 30, and Romer's is down. So I want to see FlyC again try to pressure Romer. That's why you take the Ari in this matchup. When Flash is down, Ari can make Talia very vulnerable, especially in the long lanes. We can see Quad still being there. Romer now forced to sack long lanes and really make sure that it comes to TLC's side of the map before Romer can get there. And Quad is very strong. It feels like yeah. constantly TLC are having to respond to his side pressure. So it was very key to force him out of that Drake fight. Uh, if Quad can get a timer, if they have vision on his side of the map, so Chime, Shaden are going to want to be playing on his side, then it feels like it's almost a a, a done deal for FlyQuest if those conditions can be met. Yeah, I mean, as good as the chunk was from Quad onto both Spawn and Roamer, given Roamer had TP up, I don't think burning it all was worth it at all before that dragon. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at the game state right now. We're 25 minutes into this, what has been a rather slow burn. Minute 30 before the dragon does come up, and that will be Dragon Soul for FlyQuest. So this is going to put a lot of that pressure onto TLC. Again, as you'd mentioned, we had some breakpoints met by Sajid, who was able to pick up two items. Now working on his third on top of that, this Ari is very deadly. What do you think about this dragon fight coming up, Cubby? I mean, I think right now our Challengers players are trying to prove that, you know, they can play clean enough to be LCS players and aren't going to, you know, degrade the cavemans that we've seen in the, in the <laughs> LCS. What do we you want to bet? 204 <laughs> kills between TL and Fly in LCS, and now these guys are playing 4-4 four four game. Really close. What's this? I Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Chime's able to get the lockdown onto Kim down. Spawn loses half his health. Romer's wall oh. comes in. And Chime is cut off from the rest of the group, but he's the tank. Oh, he wants to engage. He wants to go oh, in. Jenkins shows up. Here comes the explosive cask, and they'll take down the support. Still going forward. Shaden, Charm lands, but it's onto the tank. And a very tanky big boy is Jenkins right now. We'll take that right on the chin, and it's another team fight win for Team Liquid. I think uh, they took Cubby's challenge and realized they need to, to make make it a bit sloppy. Uh, I don't I don't know if if, uh, if Spicy exactly wants to take that fight exactly. I think they want to wait for the LDR because you just saw how tanky Jenkins yeah. and Kim Down are. Um, if they could get like one reset in that situation, that fight would have been that fight would have been different. But they're just hardly taking damage at this point, and the big team fight win for FlyC is going to happen when that that LDR comes through. I mean, once Kim down ate Romer, the fight was over, right? That, that's the Flash yep. member, and really well done. But Quad, you do have that low alt cooldown as the level 16 Moignan Sari, so he's fishing again. As that doesn't connect, and it feels like the last two alts from Quad have come a bit wide. I think that Quad still wants to really pressure. Anytime he can burn his alt and a charm for Flash is good. Now Dragon's being taken. Twice he's in. Good for it. Okay, it's secured by TLC, but will the fight be secured by them right now? TLC are heading for the hills because FlyQuest just brutalized Roamer, and they're headed for the big purple worm Baron. They're going to hit Baron, at least get Jenkins TP as TLC is trying to wrap around. Kills on the follow, but the question is now do Fly C turn? They will have Chime ultimate, Kelsey. I mean, this is huge, right? Because not only did they get the Flashless member that you pointed out in the last fight, but Kiel also burned Flash. 
So yes. if Teal wants to steal, he's going to have to walk in first. There and they're holding off the choke. Oh, they're just holding down Jenkins. He can go nowhere. And Quad is not afraid. We'll use the Spirit Rush onto the Kench and re-bench him. Fly quest. Get another team fight win. And once again, the purple is still available. And this is what I love about YC as a team. I, like their presence of mind really to make the right calls. It's something that we don't see from a lot of our challengers teams, but in the mid to late game scenario, especially when they're grouped up, like that's an easy call to turn there for YC in the choke as you pulled out, Kelsey. No brainer for them as they do drop the dragon, but they win two fights in a row and take the barrel. Absolutely, like FlyQuest challengers, they spent the entire split perfecting the Baron turn, uh, as we say. <laughs> They instantly know that they can zone someone out. And the targeting has been honestly a great thing from that. They always know which members don't have flash. They always know which members that they can turn on. And then they do not hesitate in those scenarios at all. Like as soon as Chime goes for an engage, the rest of the team trusts him implicitly and goes in after. Yeah, and these last two to three fights that have gone off, Sajid hasn't even burned his flash. So still being able to stay safe in these big fights that Flyquist are winning. But now that might change for poor Chime. He gets pulled right in <laughs> with the seismic shove. Sometimes, you know, the person that's warding and engaging goes on a little bit of an adventure that goes too far into the forest. So, so TLC, you're going to take him down there. YC still trying to reclaim control over this bot side. It is a nice play from TLC that slow down the Baron as Jenkins will... Uh, take a little bit of poke from Quad, who I think now that he's level 16 with Boing and Scalcy, we've really seen Quad try and push the pace of this game. And I like that pace for FlyC at this point because, like, that already cooldown at this point, it's like 30 to 40 seconds on the yep. ultimate. So you can always trade Alt Charm for a Flash. That's what you're trying to do and really create positive scenarios for FlyC moving forward. Yeah, and it is going to be a little bit dicey no matter who they have face check, even with the, the Renekton, you have the Sundered Sky and, and those I more tanky items equipped. You did just see him lose quite a bit of health bar because you have the Seismic Shove, you have the Unraveled Earth that makes it very difficult to face check versus the the Talia Graves combo. So um, we'll, we'll be taking a bit of a risk, a bit of inspiration from some, some nameless EU supports for those of you who follow LEC. Uh, and then be looking for be looking for entrances and making sure that we stay high tempo or high up on the map. You're, you're talking about the Brob, right? For sure, no one else. No? Wrong yeah, this. Sure no the seismic shove comes out. It's going on to oh. Quad. Explosive cast lands on the Quad. Quad almost goes down, but barely able to Gun? escape with his life. An invade from FlyQuest almost goes awry. Only way Quad was getting out by burning was by burning flash there. So really nice flash from Quad. But you can see the defense from TL is good and also Gragas. I mean, at this point of the game is Gragas. Your inventory really doesn't matter. You are so useful at this point. Uh, and Jenkins doing a really nice job of holding the line here. Yeah, I mean, to TLC's credit, they're doing a very good job of holding this jungle because YC want to take fights in open areas where they can use the Jinx range advantage, where they can get like a, a free for all for Viego. Uh, wherever they want, whereas TLC kind of want to bouncy house them with the, the Gragas in these show points and uh, see if they can, can find those happen. So standing in the jungle, holding vision in the jungle and making sure that Flyce are separated when they're going for multi-lane sieges is a really good game plan from TLC. So really glad to see them stall out this Baron for Flyce. With TLC on the back foot, Kelsey, like, what do you think they need to do as we're a minute away from this dragon? Is there any way they can set up to try and win one of these fights as they are first to at least take a turn in the river here? And we are seeing, we are, we do have three items completed for Gragas. Gragas is becoming a little bit more oppressive in the sideline with the grasp stacked, uh, which with everything there. So if you can create a pivot point where you're basically zoning at least the Renekton out, where you're setting up the Baron here and forcing Flycy to face check, that's, that's the money, money shot there, you know? It's kind of nice. what they're looking for. Going wide on the hook right there as both teams ready to engage onto each other. It's Team Liquid who are holding the route onto the Dragon. Explosive cast goes out, able to grab Chime. Chime has to flash out. Quad tries to oh, find a flash, but Romer is getting one kill oh. so far. Now Jenkins onto Shaden, but look at Sajet. Sajet's nice. on check. He still has his flash, so he can clean this fight up. Tries to do Ooh. a fancy angle, but it's too much Ooh. for him to handle. His ankles will break. It's a triple kill for kill as one more cleaned up and team liquid challengers find the ace it was a smoke screen from graves the jet wasn't able to auto he had the flash past it ends up getting caught by tlc and with those four members being down tlc they win oh, wow. the big team fight kelsey they're gonna win the game 
Yeah, I mean, this is, they can they can close from here, but as you said, the, it was huge. Like, Sajed had to put himself in an awkward position just to hit, and they end up in a situation where he's down, and then you have Shaden going in to, to pull the fight. Let's see if Chime can okay, pull, pull the miracle play. Pull the wave? Yeah, trying to cut the wave right now, pulling it away from the uh, Nexus Tower. He's got it. He's got it. He's oh. got it. Get it. So right oh now, TLC, they cannot tower. finish off. Oh. oh my god, Chime, that was game saving. Like, Chime with the... Earning the MVP there, right, right, right there. Okay, <laughs> if Flycy if win this one, he's MVP for this game for sure. Oh my, we saw uh, the yeah, game. I thought definitely. that was it. I thought that was over. The fact that Chime pulled oh, yeah. that, like, everyone's up now. TLC have to respect the potential for resets. And this gives Flycy the first turn on Baron. So now for TL, yes, they get the dragon, but it's going to be really tough for them to check their topside jungle. Yeah, yeah, already I mean, FlyQuest are headed in that position. I mean, bonus for TLC, hey, they stopped the Dragon Soul, right? So Dragon Soul point for both teams now, five minutes before that comes up. But again, it's that Baron you were mentioning, Cubby, as right now it's a setup coming out for FlyQuest. Yep, I do think the, the one thing that FlyQuest have going for them is they did have the Dragon notification. They have the Pink Ward in the enemy jungle. They can go ahead and set up this side of the map, right? So they can... Try to force a, a fight on their terms now, right? With the control that they have, with the vision that they have, and then force TLC to face check them. Uh, so we'll see if, if that ends up working for them then, but TLC don't care. They're just charging down mid lane here. Yeah, they brute forced it, and so Jed has no sums, and that's the big part for this next fight, because he doesn't have Tom Kench to help him. That's, that's a really nice chunk on a roamer from Quad. Flyquest so trying to get okay. into position in the mid lane right now. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge as they do have supers coming in, but now here comes the fight. Chime is pulled in by the seismic Sajid shove and slain. Sajed has to back off. Remember, he oh, does not have it. flash, but he is excited. Yep. Thanks to the super mega death rocket, goes on to Jenkins, puts a few rockets into him. He sees the angle, he sees the momentum, he sees the power, Sajid. and they're just gonna clean up Sajed, the rookie that we all wanted nice. to see. Pentacle. We'll get the pentakill for Flyquest. <laughs> Challengers! And this is the exciting thing about Sujet, oh right? God. The team fight god, the jinx that we called out, the one-two pick right there. We knew that his landing wasn't going to be that great at the start of the season, but we knew he would carry team fights. He would win games for you, you know, from gold leads down, and he's definitely pulling it off in this game. <laughs> what a game number one. I mean, Cubby. MVP, I don't know who anymore, man. <laughs> Chime saved the game. We get a pentakill out of Sajed. What an ending. And that's a real pentakill. That's not a smolder one. None of that crap. That's a jinx pentakill, all right? <laughs> that's some old school League of Legends that we got going on. We got a replay, take another look at that. I mean, Sajed at the start of this, he couldn't move, but it's the rocket that he threads through the fight. Right here. It's really yeah. Zuri setting it up with the stun off the choppers that caught Keel. So that's the first reset, and how FlyC pointed out from here was wonderful. Quad bought so much space for Sajad on the back half, and Sajad just got to rain down rockets from the back line, finds everyone, finds the pentakill. And that's crazy, because the fight earlier, that was turned off a smoke screen from Keel. So the fact that Keel was the first member removed, didn't have the chance to one-shot anyone in that fight, Kelsey, really turned that thing on its head, and all of a sudden FlyC... They were down a Nexus turret, and now they come back and take the Nexus to TLC. They find that first game. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That We get to see at the very end the big croc coming through, zoning off three members, <laughs> which lets uh, Sajed there get the kill, get the reset, pull in, and then Viego with the follow-up as well, the reset comp coming through. I know that uh, Shaden has had so many pop-off Viego games, so finally being able yeah. to, to demonstrate in this fight, whereas so many other fights, it feels like he's getting uh, one shot by the Graves off the bat. So uh, absolutely great close from FlyQuest there. Yeah, absolutely great close. I mean, from Chime cutting the wave to Sajed getting that pentakill, it's a great way <laughs> to come back in game number one and start off this series. We're going to take a moment to throw it over a short break. When we return, we'll head into game number two, FlyQuest versus Team Liquid Challengers. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said, under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new Footlong Sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, next up in some news, it was announced that NACA Finals will be live here in the Riot Games Arena, which is obviously a pretty big deal because this could be the first time some of these players are actually taken to the stage. I am so pumped for this. To get to see players experience their first ever game on stage is incredible. You know, kind of learning what it's like. Uh, what's NACL? So speaking of magic, Cubby, I hear you worked some to get NACL Finals live somehow. Yeah, team effort. Uh, but you know what? We're going back to the studio on April 1st for our live finals. You can get tickets now, and there's even going to be an award show to go along with it. So you know what's interesting, Emily? Not only are they bringing back the most valuable prospect, but they're introducing a new slew of awards for the players and teams also to vote on. Yeah, so looking at the list, there's also going to be a, a most improved player and a rookie of the split award, and they're voting for all pros. It's kind of like we do in the LCS, so it'll feel a little more familiar, I guess. Yeah, NACL is going to be highlighting more players for their performance over the last split, and I think that's going to be awesome. I already know who my MVP is, but now I got to think about all those other awards, too. And also, finals are live, so we could all go technically and see the players. Yeah, and I think it's so cool that they opened up the voting for the awards to the teams and the players as well. Yeah, even the NACL co-streamers are going to get a chance to fill out their ballots this year. It's awesome to see so many different community members involved. Yo, Eric, they just announced that NACL finals are live and we can get tickets. Oh, sick. Playoffs are on right now. Put it on. Let's go. 